This Act is a, apparently called the Sentencing and Parole Reform Act uh, 2008. That's what the title clause says of this bill. But that kind of implies that there's been a reform, something positive, something good that's happened to sentencing and parole. But in fact, I think a better title for this Act would be removal of discretion that resides with our judges and with the parole board in favour of those who want to sloganeer their way into um, a particular position with the public. This is a bill that is based on a fiction. It is based on a lie. It does not represent any truth in sentencing or parole. It does not act as a deterrent. It does not make our community safer. And for every single person in this House that has stood up and said that they're on the side of victims of crime, we on this side of the House would like to see fewer victims of crime. We would like to put our energy and effort into re removing some of those drivers of crime, which I know that some elements of the government is actually interested in addressing. We started off down that pathway, and I'm glad that the, some members of the government are willing to pick up and run with it. But maybe that explains why this sentencing and parole reform bill is in the name of the Minister of Police and Corrections instead of being in the name of the Minister of Justice, which is where this bill rightly resides. It is the Justice Ministry that develops policy uh, for uh, governments based on the policy decisions that they make. They are the ones who translate the policy ideas into legislation. This started off life, I think, as the, um, as the uh, orphan child of one David Garrett as a private member's bill. Am I right about that? And it got picked up by the government as a, um, as a government measure as part of the arrangement that National has with the ACT Party. But I think that that's a shame because we're hearing all of the language that is associated with the three strikes law in, a, in the United States of America when we know that the three strikes law in America has not made those states any safer than any of the other states um, of America as a result of that law. And in fact, we know that the two groups of people who are less safe when this kind of law is passed are prison officers and police officers. They are much more at risk when there is nothing left to lose. And that is exactly what we are saying to those who will rem remain in prison for the rest of their lives, and the numbers will increase over time. Those individuals, they will be putting at risk police officers and prison officers missing out on the third strike. So it says sentencing and parole reform. It's not sentencing and parole reform. It's removing the discretion. It's mandatory sentences. That's what this legislation should be called, the mandatory sentences law reform and no parole um, in particular cases. And I think that people should think very seriously about the impact that this legislation will have on those two groups, the prison officers and the police officers. Because when you've got nothing left to lose, then obviously the person that's standing in the way of you confronting that reality is going to be very much at risk. And there have been many examples in the United States of police officers that have been shot going round to arrest somebody for what would be the third strike. And the other thing is, is that the nature of the charges that are going to be brought against the individuals, and that's another name that you could give this bill, and that is how to lock up more of our Māori population in prison bill. That, that would actually be a more truth and titling bill, uh, that name for the bill, than anything that we have before us today. We know that Māori are much more likely to get stopped in the street. We know that Māori are much more likely to get arrested if stopped. We know that Māori are much more likely to be charged if arrested. 
We know that Māori are much more likely, Mr. Chairman. The Honourable Mr. Chairman. Delzo. We know that Māori are much more likely to be charged with more serious offences if they are charged. Mr. Chairman, they are much more likely to be convicted if they face um, a court hearing, and they are much more likely to go to jail if they are Māori. And that, to me, is an indictment on our entire system, and this bill will add to it. Anyone who has had a misspent youth facing a charge, and they're not all in the category that we've had described to us. Of course, we've got very strong feelings about murder, about rape, about sexual violation, those things. But there are other ones as well where they are not as serious as those, and they cover a magnitude, a full range of offenders covered under the same ones. I'm not saying that any of them are minor. I'm just saying that there are circumstances where somebody gets a conviction for manslaughter because he was involved in a suicide pact with his wife, and he, in fact, that particular case, this man, this man was convicted of murder. He pleaded guilty to murder, and that was a case where he had entered into a suicide pact with his wife, and she had been successful in completing her suicide with his assistance. He had not been successful in killing himself. He was resuscitated and charged with murder. He pleaded guilty. He got home detention. Under this piece of legislation, if he'd had a misspent youth, he'd have been locked up for the rest of his natural life. So all I'm saying is, is that there is no capacity in this legislation for any sense of forgiveness. No, no chance of redemption. No chance for anybody to turn their lives around. How many senior gang members do people in this House know who are now respected members of the community? We know that former gang members came to the ministerial drivers of crime meeting because now they're giving back to their community. This bill says that they should never have been allowed out of jail and that they should have been Order. left there Order. for the rest of their lives. Order. Can I just remind the member that um, we're on clauses one and two and it would actually pay to mention title and commencement. Um, you have mentioned it a couple of times, but I would actually like you to come back because title and commencement are clauses one and two. The Honourable Leanne Delzell. Mr Chairman, the title of this bill is misleading. It talks about reform when what I have just described to this House is not reform. It is a huge backward step. And it says that nobody, nobody can change. And that's unfortunate that this House is debating something that's called the Sentencing and Parole Reform Bill when it should actually be called the, um, the misrepresentation of a three strikes failed policy in the United States. It should be, let's make our communities less safe, let's lock up more Māori, let's make sure that we give no chance to anyone to redeem themselves no matter what crime they have committed. There are people now contributing to our society in an extremely positive way, and I would rather be debating something that genuinely was about reforming sentencing and parole so that we could have a safer society and so that those who were capable of redemption were able to redeem themselves, to front up to the victims of their crime. We keep forgetting that this is supposedly about the victims of crime, but how is it anyway, um, Sentencing and Parole Reform Act, looking at the victims of crime when it, they're not even mentioned in the title of the Act? And unfortunately for a lot of victims or a lot of offenders, they leave prison saying that they've paid their debt to society. What about their debt to the victims of their crime? What about their debt to their families? And what about the debt to the community that has been upset by that crime being committed in, um, in their midst? And I think that if this bill genuinely was a Sentencing and Parole Reform Act, as the title clause describes it, uh, then it would be doing something quite different uh, from what is presented here, because this is really a three strikes, let's emulate the United States, let's not care if we end up spending 20 times the amount on our correction system than we spend on our education system, because if we do go down the track 
of, uh, of the uh, United um, States, then that's exactly the direction that we'll be